Hi there, Pam Coburn Litvak here. Have you ever heard the saying, the way to someone's heart is through their stomach? There's a lot of truth to that. We naturally equate food with good times, and food can bring us a lot of joy. But it turns out this is not the only link between food and mood. Part eight of my series tells the tale of the gut-brain connection. The brain and the gut talk to each other and can influence each other's actions. The brain affects our appetite, how we digest our food, and how nutrients get delivered. The gut can change brain chemistry, which can then affect our mood. What I haven't mentioned yet is there's something in the middle that helps these two talk to each other. Actually, a lot of some things. The trillions of microbes, like bacteria, that live in the gut. The average human has about 100 trillion of these tiny tenants, which means they outnumber our own body cells 10 to 1. The microbes talk to the brain, and the brain talks back. They use a complicated language of electrical signals, hormones, neurotransmitters, and immune chemicals called cytokines. We now know that different emotional states, feeling stressed out for example, can directly impact the gut and its microbiome. On the other hand, our gut microbes hold at least some sway over our emotions and our behavior. So researchers are now wondering, how can we use this two-way communication to improve our mental health? Could we, for example, treat problems like depression or anxiety by manipulating the gut microbiome? The answer is probably. Now let me give you the slightly longer answer based on all the research that's been done so far. Let's break it down into two steps. First, we want to support our existing gut microbiome by eating as healthy as we can. Research tells us that an unhealthy diet full of fat and sugar changes the population of microbes that live in our gut, wiping out the good kind and boosting the bad kind. An unhealthy diet can also cause a condition called leaky gut. This is when the intestinal wall breaks apart and leaks its contents into the rest of the body. This includes little bits of bad bacteria called lipopolysaccharides, LPSs for short. These LPSs can then cause the release of cytokines that trigger inflammation and oxidative stress. They also tip the body toward weight gain and insulin resistance. And this just makes the inflammation problem worse because fat cells store and release their own cytokines. Over recent decades, the developed world has shifted toward eating more sugar, refined foods, salt, and fat. And this has undoubtedly contributed toward the growing epidemic of obesity, inflammatory bowel disease, allergies, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, depression, and other mental disorders. So it just makes sense to start out by cleaning up our diet and adding in as much anti-inflammatory stuff as we can. I know, it's not very exciting advice, but it does provide a solid foundation for any more steps we choose to take. Speaking of which, one possibility is taking probiotics. These are microbes that we add to the gut by eating them in our food or taking them as supplements. Foods with live probiotic cultures include kefir, yogurt, miso, tempeh, kimchi, and sauerkraut. The research behind this is still in early stages, but it seems promising. One recent review of all placebo-controlled human studies reported that taking probiotics probably can decrease anxiety and stress and improve our mental outlook. But to be fair, there still are some unanswered questions about probiotic supplements. For one thing, we're still working out the best dose and duration. We're also still working out the best strains to take, although two that seem to work well are lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. Another important question is, do probiotics cause side effects? None have been reported in depression or anxiety studies, but that doesn't mean they don't happen. Since probiotics do affect the immune system, you and I should proceed with caution if we have a weakened immune system or certain disorders like Crohn's disease. Now let's put all of this together. We should always start by eating a healthy anti-inflammatory diet. We can also feed the good microbes in our gut by giving them plenty of the fiber-rich food they love, like onions, garlic, oats, and bananas. 
These foods are called prebiotics. Talk to your doctor if you're thinking about taking probiotics. They may help and they probably won't hurt unless you have a compromised immune system or an underlying illness. Please like and share this content and take a few seconds right now to subscribe. Thanks so much.